Have you ever wondered how applications create this undo action all the way obviously from the front end to the back end? So when you delete something, let's say I delete this item, then we get this toast notification and then we have access to this undo button. And when I click on it, as we can see, the item is brought back. And all of this is obviously not in the front end. The data is persisted in a database. So we're going to take a look at how to do that in the back end. So let's start off with the database design. Now you can find the repository for this project in the description. So we have this model group. So table groups, then we have some information such as a unique ID, created ad, the titles, then we have owner and members. But we also have this deleted ad column. Now this one is optional, so it can be nullable. So this is a way for us to mark when a row was deleted without actually removing it from the database. And this is important for soft deletions. That means that you're marking a row to be deleted in the future, but you're not deleting it in this spot. So this is very important so that when we come here and say delete, we're performing a soft delete, but it still exists in the database. And then we can click on undo. And what it is going to do is simply set the deleted ad column to be null, as simple as that. Of course, this means that you need to set up a cron job that is actually going to remove all of the groups that have a deleted ad. But we're going to take a look into that cron job in a bit. Now here I set up some basic indexes. Well, first of all, for the owner ID, that's because of the queries I'm making in the data access layer. But well, this depends on your application. But I also set up a partial index in the deleted ad column. So this is an index where deleted ad is null. Now this is already created and applied in my database management system. But the reason I have this commented is because unfortunately Prisma does not support partial indexes. So for me and for other developers that are going to work in this, they can at least know that there's an index here, even though we're not actually enforcing it at the Prisma level. That means that we have to create a migration, so create only using that flag, that is going to allow us to create the migration but not applied. And then what you would have to do is come here to the migration file, and then you would have to say create index, and then on groups deleted ad, and then pass in the where clause so that it is a partial index where this only applies for where the deleted ad is null. Now, this is great because here we're essentially making it more efficient as the index is smaller. So it only includes rows that match this condition. So where it is null. And this is also great for that write performance. When we're writing to the database, since there are fewer index updates on operations that do not affect these rows, so in this case where deleted ad has an actual value, then we're going to have better performance overall. And this is actually common practice when you're dealing with soft deletes. Now, please do not define columns like this, but with booleans such as true for it to be deleted and false otherwise. Booleans are a code smell, but in terms of databases, you do not have extra information aside from just a true or false. So that's why it's better to use dates that can be nullable. That way, at least you get information of when that event occurred instead of that meaningless Boolean flag. And that's pretty much it. This is everything in terms of the database. So let me actually show you how that looks like in the database. So here we have all of them. So all of the existing groups and we have this deleted ad column. Now if I come here and then click on delete and then come back here and then refresh this, as we can see, we now have this date and well, it no longer exists. But if I come back here, get rid of this value, so set to null and then update this and then come back here and refresh. As we can see, it is now here. So this is a soft delete. So for this, the logic is quite straightforward. I have this delete group function. So it takes in a group ID and the owner ID. 
This is just to make sure that the person that is making the request and trying to delete a group is actually the owner of the group. That way you do not allow anyone to delete any group. And then here we have update table and then we have groups. And in this where we have where the ID is equal to the group ID, where the owner ID is equal to the owner ID. And then finally, where deleted at is null. That way you can only try deleting a group that is already not pending to be deleted. That way you cannot abuse the system and basically have an archive of your own. And then here we have set, deleted at, and then well, we just pass in the current date. And same with the undo delete group. So we pass in the group ID, the owner ID, then we check in this case, I have it for seven days. You can bump this up to 14 days, a month, whatever you want. And then I have the same where, but in this case, we check where the deleted at is greater than or equal to seven days ago. This way you prevent someone from undoing a delete for a group that is maybe a month old. So this is just a safeguard. And then we have set deleted at to be null again. And well, we execute this. Now this is being called by the service. So here we have the service delete group, and then we throw the according errors. And then we have the router, which is actually with CRPC. So we have delete group protected procedure, we pass in the session ID, which corresponds to the owner ID, and do the same for the undo delete group. So everything is very straightforward. So let's quickly test this out. So if I come here and then delete one and then come here to my database and then change this up to be one month ago. So more than enough time and then undo, we get a group not found or you are not the owner of the group. So again, for this, all you need to do is check this. So for the undo, just get the data and check, well, if it was successful. Obviously, I'm using Kisily, which is basically typed SQL. But if you're using Prisma or something else, which is an actual ORM, it should be very straightforward either way. So this is all of the backend logic. But now what about the front end? How can we do that? Well, if I come here to the actions for the owner, so owner actions here in group card, here I have this defined. So I have the delete mutation. So use mutation. This is from Tansta query, but well, this is a wrapper for CRPC. And then we have undo delete mutation. So then I define these two functions. So undo delete group and delete group. And here all I'm doing is simply call the mutate async and pass in that group ID. And then I use this promise, which comes from the toast. And this comes from Sonner. And this is actually a great library for toasts. As we can see, if I render a toast, we get this nice animation. But not only that, it has also great configuration. So you have for success. So we get this check icon, we have for info, warning, we have error, we have action. So this is the one that I'm using where you pass in the action here. So you say toast, then the message, and then you pass in action and then label and then the on click. So this is what we're doing here. So we have loading since this is a promise, then restoring group, then we have for the success. This is a function here. All we do is simply invalidate the query, which retrieves all of the groups. So this one, the main one that way it is going to fetch again the data. And well, we're going to see that on deleted item here again. And then we have the error which simply invokes this function, we pass in the error, and all it is going to do is check the instance of the error. So if it comes from TRPC, then return the error message, otherwise the custom message that we passed in. Now as for the delete group, we have the same, so promise, we pass in the group ID with the delete mutation, we have the loading, we have the success, so same here, we invalidate the query, we have this error, but then we have this action. So the one that they have in the documentation. So we say label, undo, and then on click, we call this function. And then we have the duration, so 15 seconds. So all of this is where the magic happens. So we first call the lead group. So when we click on this, we get this toast. So this one, and then we have the action with the on click. 
which as we can see invoked the other mutation so undo delete mutation so if you want to take a look at the code play around with it again you can find the repository in the description now what about the cron job well for this all we need to do is delete from groups where the deleted ad has already expired so if deleted ad is already overdue by more than seven days now in this case i'm using rasql with this using class the reason is because i'm using postgres and postgres does not support limit with delete from but if you're using mysql or something of the like then you should be able to just do delete from and then limit so important for you to set a limit you do not want to be locking your database if there are a lot of rows and well with this you can just configure the cron job so you could have a cron expression every 12 hours and it is simply going to run this function but that depends entirely on your environment if you're using serverless then you cannot have these cron schedules so you would have to look with your hosting provider anyway this wraps up the video if you want to see more content like this make sure to like the video and subscribe i'll see you in the next one